剣Ah, fighting game music. Need I say more? Probably not, but I'm going to. Some of my favorite video game tracks of all time come from fighting games. This stuff is the stuff that great stuff is made of. I mean, Street Fighter 2 single-handedly changed the way I viewed, or should I say heard, video game music. Just like my video for racing game soundtracks, there are so many more than I could ever fit into one video, so this is just a taste, really. So let's check them out. Fatal Fury was a game that instantly drew me in the first time I rented it for my Super Nintendo. It was a lot like Street Fighter 2, but also had its own unique aspects that really helped it stand out. And while the music didn't have that same seriousness that the Capcom brawler exhibited, this one would still leave a lasting impression on me with its more lighthearted, upbeat melodies. I feel it's really important in a fighting game to capture a stage in musical form and present it to the player, and I'd say they did just that here. And though M. Bison's theme will always be a classic, I feel that Geese Howard's theme in Fatal Fury better captures that urgency and anxiety that a boss battle tends to invoke. When the sequel hit arcades, we would see new players, new levels, and new music. The way they continued to capture each part of the world in song form always fascinated me. Terry Bogard has always been one of my favorite game characters, and with the inclusion of his own level in Fatal Fury 2, he would get his own theme that meshes with his personality perfectly.
By the time Fatal Fury 3 was released, the landscape was changing a bit musically for fighting games, but this one would feature some memorable numbers as well. As time would pass, more games in the series would be released and more wonderful original songs would accompany them, but the first few games still stick out the most to me. When X-Men Children of the Atom was released, it was like a dream come true for me. I grew up on the X-Men animated series and the Fleer Ultra trading cards, not to mention the action figures. Oh man, I had a million of those things. And I grew up on Street Fighter. This one would take some of my favorite comic book heroes and give them a Street Fighter-esque foundation, complete with that wonderful Capcom sound that I couldn't get enough of. The sound here fits the Marvel attitude for the time with adrenaline inducing beats filled with all sorts of synth and chunky bass lines. This was truly a great time in the genre, and while it may never be the same again, there's always the joy of remembering how good it once was. When Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Tournament Fighters hit the Super Nintendo, I knew I had found what would become one of my favorite all-time 2D fighters. I can still remember renting this one over and over again until I was finally able to own a copy. With excellent visuals and gameplay also come some truly great Konami sounds.
The music in this version just fits so well into the TMNT universe to me. And the Metalworks theme played in Shredder Stage has always stood out to me as a truly classic 16-bit musical gem. Double Dragon is a 1995 2D tournament fighter for the Neo Geo that I never got to play until many years after its release, but once I got the chance, I quickly realized that this game had something great in store for my ears. This one may have slipped away from me upon its release, but it's definitely one that gets regular rotation from me these days, partly due to its soundtrack. By now we probably all know the impact that Street Fighter 2 has left on the gaming industry, not just gameplay wise, but musically as well. I mean I don't think these stage themes have left my head in decades. But what about the games that came shortly after? Street Fighter Alpha would feature a more subtle musical approach, utilizing more jazzy influence. For some reason, this one took some time to grow on me when I was a kid. I just wanted more of what we heard in Street Fighter 2, but as I played the game more and more, I started to realize that these songs were special.
With many new characters being introduced here, well, I should say reintroduced, it was important that they were given an identity in appearance, stage design, and of course, in their theme song. While the game's sequel would feature much of the same music as the first, we would see some new characters debut, which meant some new themes. The Alpha series would continue with one more game, but would heavily stray from the sound heard in the first two titles. This series is truly a classic, and so are the soundtracks. Give them a listen if you haven't had the chance. And while we're on the subject of Street Fighter, let's talk about the movie. Well, not the movie, the game. But based on the movie, which of course was based on the game. This one may have been ugly to look at, but the console ports played really well and featured some excellent themes. I really didn't enjoy the stage designs much, but the music helped me feel a little bit more engaged in them. This game gets some well-deserved laughs, but honestly, there are definitely worse fighters out there, especially in the sound department. Virtua Fighter hit the arcades in 1993 as the world's first fully three-dimensional fighting game and would be praised universally as a fantastic experience. 
Japanese composer Takayuki Nakamura would handle composition here, having previously worked on titles such as the console version of Michael Jackson's Moonwalker, Outrunners, Columns 2, and E-SWAT. He would also later handle musical production for the Xbox title WWF Raw, amongst many other titles. This one would feature hints of many genres, including some rock, mixed with jazz, and even pop. Takanobu Mitsuyoshi of Daytona USA fame would join in for the game's sequel released in Japanese arcades in late 1994 and the US in early 95. It's clear that Takanobu's contributions can be heard here. These themes do such a wonderful job of capturing each environment and setting. Even though the same template was clearly used as far as style goes, this one definitely features some tracks with slightly more feeling. Next to Street Fighter, this title might actually feature some of the most memorable fighting game music to date for me.
Eternal Champions is a game that I remember getting a lot of attention upon its release, but for some reason isn't talked about much anymore. I'll still never forget that title track theme. The rap group Bone Thugs and Harmony actually released a few songs during the mid 90s that featured beats inspired by many of the game's themes. Wow, that's still so cool to me even 25 years later. Here's another one. It's sad this game doesn't get as much attention as other fighters these days, but the soundtrack definitely should, if nothing else. Marvel superheroes would be the follow-up to X-Men Children of the Atom, and would later blossom into the Marvel vs. Capcom series. This one would hit us with some fast-paced, exciting Capcom fighting game music. This was truly a great time to be a fighting game fan and the music seemed to be better than ever.
This one would even hit us with some outside of the box styles for the time. This is another one of those original soundtracks you can and should listen to in your leisure time. It's really that good. Once again, this is just a small sample of the fantastic original fighting game soundtracks that exist out there in the gaming world, so get out there and check some of them out. And let me know what some of your favorite fighting game soundtracks are, I'd really love to hear about them. As always, I want to thank you for watching and I hope to see you back here next time.